as the regular season comes to a close in the Liberty A-League and history is in the open for the Perth Glory as their hopes for playing postseason football comes to a close as well. Melbourne Victory's draw this morning with the Wellington Phoenix has quashed any hopes Alex Aparks' side had of playing finals football. However, there is pride and jobs on the line as next season is coming just around the corner. We'll have a look at how the sides line up for today's match. Just the one change for the Brisbane Roar. As Clay Stevenson drops out of the entire match day squad, and Tamar Levin comes in to the starting lineup in her place. Matilda's forward, Larissa Crummer, announced her departure from the side, heading for Europe and signing with Norwegian side SK Branner. Her departure just leaves Shay Connors as the only Brisbane player with more than one goal this campaign. Just the one change from Wednesday night's clash with Sydney FC for Perth Glory as Alana Janczewski drops to the bench, making way for American forward Gabriella Coleman, who scored during the week off the bench and makes her first start in four months. It's a final Liberty A-League game for Kim Carroll and what a side for it to come against where she made 65 appearances for the Brisbane Raw, placing her seventh highest all-time, playing in three grand finals for her home state club. Both sides walking out there. Kim Carroll with the captain's armband in her final game in the league, in football. And what a side for it to come against in this one. Ish Norrick wearing the armband against her former side as well. As always, Mitchelton Juniors walking out the Perth Glory side and I believe Mount Gravatt as well walking out the Brisbane Roar. The junior side of both Ish Ferguson and Katrina Gorey as well. Two Brisbane Raw legends. Jessie Rashard walking her two kids out as well. And Kim Carroll. And we'll be taking a moment of silence today in memory of Australian football icon Manfred Schaefer. 49 appearances for Australia. Milkman by day, Socceroo by night. A true icon of the game. And another one there in the form of Kim Carroll. What a moment for her against her former side to draw curtains and call time on an illustrious career. Plenty of caps for the Matildas as well, Kim Carroll. And I'm sure some former teammates sprinkled in there as well. Shay Connors, well, she's in fine form coming into this game, the American. Having such a strong season, particularly towards the back end. Seven goal involvements in her last eight games. And really becoming the talismanic figure for this Brisbane Raw side. And it is Tawong Juniors who are walking out the Brisbane Raw just a few short kilometres away. And as I mentioned, Kim Carroll and Ish Nori, the captains for today, doing the coin toss. Gareth McPherson, his second year in charge at the Brisbane Raw. And at the moment, as I sit in ninth position, on track for their worst ever finish as a club. So plenty of pressure on that man's shoulders. Alex Aparkas, on the other hand, with plenty to do. The referee for today, Anna-Marie Keeley, Lauren Hargrave, Avril Beecham and Beck Mackey, the officiating crew for this afternoon's match. Alex Aparkas in his third season at the helm on the end of the bench there. Not currently signed on for next season. We know he is Sydney based, of course. Campbell Johnson here in commentary, joined by former Matilda 
and Canberra United legend Gray Skill in the commentary booth today and what a great opportunity as we'll have a look at the table finals maybe just a little bit well in fact it is a little bit too far away for the Perth glory but starting pre-season almost for next campaign well a pleasure to be here Cam and that's a tough one per three games in seven days on the road and they would have been coming into today's match wanting to go out and hopefully make the top four but as you just mentioned that is no longer viable for this side so it's more about how they can send off Kim Carroll in fine form and you imagine in front of some family and friends back up in Brizzy. There was a late change to the lineup today as well. Sierra Hinson was named to start the American but dropped down to the bench. Gabriella Coleman, her first start in four months. And Zara Kruger gets us underway. The young Matilda was part of Leah Blaney's most recent squad. And that's a big out as well. Gray skill, Sierra Hinson, six goals, seven assists for the campaign. One of the real shining lights in this Perth Glory side this year. Oh, she certainly has been, and Alexa Parkes has spoken glowingly about her. There's Palmer on the edge, but Fryer managed to get a foot to it, but just couldn't put her laces through. Lively start for Brisbane, but most certainly Sierra Hinson, a player on the bench who will look, I guess, menacing to come on a little later into the match, but she was nursing some really heavy knee tape in last game and the week before too, so perhaps just... A little precautionary there, but it does give Gabby Coleman another opportunity to add to not only her matches, but her goal scoring for the season too. And Kim Carroll not in any need of adding to her matches. And now Liberty A-League equal record holder for appearances alongside Michelle Heyman. Both of those players taking over from Teresa Polias this season. And Grace Gill, I mean two absolute servants to the game, particularly Kim Carroll in today's match. Oh, well, it's a, a really big moment for, for Kim this afternoon, and I'm sure now that finals is out of the picture for this Perth Glory side, the focus then becomes about how the team, how the group can best send Kim Carroll off in the fashion that she deserves. McQueen under a bit of pressure there from Gabriella Coleman, who has that right knee taped up. Hannah Blake starting on the right-hand side today for Perth Glory. The Kiwi mid-season acquisition has been fantastic for them. Three goals since coming to the club. Sakalis does well to evade the traffic. Alongside Western Sydney Wanderers midfielder Beth Gordon, the most fouled player in the competition. It's 36 times so far. Doesn't draw one that time. And it's a matchup today where Brisbane really have made home their fortresses. Shay Connors trying to find herself underneath it, but the former Brisbane Raw custodian Morgan Aquino equal to it. And Brisbane Raw have really made their home state so solid for themselves, only losing one game in their last 10 in Queensland. On the other hand, Perth. They've had Raw's number in recent memory in their last three meetings against the team in Orange. And I don't know about you, Grace, but whenever these two sides come up against each other, it has a real old-school W League feel about it. Rank it. Under pressure and picked up by Tash Rigby. Tees it up for Coleman, who just puts it over the bar in her first start in four months and what was a gaping opportunity for the american goes begging well that's a really energetic start from perth great pressure applied from tash rigby that's got to be in the back of the net there by gabby coleman a perfect opportunity for perth to get scoring underway and on a platter she's just leant back too far in the opportunity and skied that brisbane raw give it away once more sicarlis perth charging forward sadie lawrence winding up and won't trouble the American Hensley handcuff. But you can see the energy in which Perth have come into this game. A high press, and they're putting Brisbane under pressure, allowing them to have the first pass. But just when that space closes down, and another look, this strike that came through, didn't too 
trouble too much in the way of Hensley handcuff. Easy task for her there. She's been excellent this year for Brisbane, despite the results not quite going their way. Lowry striking from range and into the YMCA, perhaps just behind the goal here at Perry Park in Brisbane's inner north, Bowen Hills. Just a few short kilometres away from the city centre. The home of the Brisbane Strikers. In the Football Queensland Premier League, obviously a historic club in Queensland. NSL winners back in 1997. And Hannah Lowry has been so good for Perth Glory this year, standing over it. Four goals, four assists. Such a young talent, Grace. Yeah, a lot of time for Hannah Lowry. Still just 19 years old. Such a technically gifted player as well with that wonderful left foot. As she will take a bit of time to line this one up. She did think there for a moment about taking that one quickly, but opts to get a few numbers into the box instead. Scored last weekend in what was possibly the craziest game in Liberty A-League history. Their win over Melbourne City. Lowry. Delivering towards the back post now. Jesse Rasha rising above the pack on that occasion. Blake. In behind for Rigby and Ishinari, the captain, equal to it. Kaya Stevenson out of the match day squad for the Brisbane Roar. Supposed ankle injury, six to eight weeks. She'll be missing out and won't really affect the Brisbane Roar with their season coming to an end today, both sides with their final game of the campaign. Lowry. From the set piece once more, towards the near post, handed away by Shea Connors, I believe, on that front post, and it is Jamila Rankin, in fact. And Perth will get another bite of the cherry. Lowry. To the front post once more headed on that time by a Brisbane player by the looks of things in Tamar Levin and will go wide for another corner this time on the other side oh it's a wonderful deliver the delivery there from Lowry really good trajectory and you've got someone the height of Hensley handcuff in goal six foot three to be able to put that much shape and whip on the cross in from the corner it's a really well hit ball we've seen her score Olympicos this year at Macedonia Park, Lowry once more, floated in, punched away, not cleanly though. Perth still alive, Sarah Kane teeing it up and it just floats. Out for a goal kick. Some early warning signs there for Brisbane. Three set pieces in a row, Hannah Lowry with that technical ability. I thought on that last one, perhaps Handcuff could have come out and just commanded her area. I did mention she's got this phenomenal height about her and can so easily rise above those players around her. Incredible reach. Looks as if the youngster Zara Kruger playing in that six role, holding midfield, allowing others such as Holly Palmer and Ish Nori to play in a more advanced position in this midfield. Holly Palmer taking more responsibility this campaign with the departures of Katrina Gori, who only played 10 games across the course of the season. And as well, the injury to Mario Becker, who we did see warming up, and Sean Fry just catching Hannah Blake late there. Looks to be in a little bit of pain, does the New Zealand player. Didn't look to be too much malice in there, just a little bit clumsy from Sean Fry. Yeah, a little bit lazy there on the challenge. That's just poked a toe out there, has Sean Fryer. And Hannah Blake has gone down heavily. And perhaps that could have been a yellow. Just the recklessness of the challenge. But again, this will be another opportunity now for Perth to load up numbers into the 18-yard box. Holding on to that right shoulder as well. Hannah Blake, Lowry, with about her fourth or fifth dead ball so far in this game. And at the back post, Liz Anton unable to steer it goal bound. Brisbane having to absorb some early pressure here. It was that high press from Perth and perhaps you think that was an instruction from Alex Aparkas just to put the Brisbane Raw team under a lot of pressure and with the exception of a goal, 
for reward. It has proved to be an effective way to start this game. Kane. Kruger able to read it well. Norrie. McQueen. Return from a long-term ACL injury. He's had a good run in the first team recently. Fryer injured herself as well in return to this campaign. Kane. Jesse Rashard able to head it away. Was nursing a shoulder injury in recent weeks as well. Jesse Rashard. And a throw in. Such a strong asset for the Brisbane Roar. Riley to Carlos. Strong in the challenge. And India Page Riley. The Kiwi. Gives away the foul on that occasion. That's a frustrating one there for Riley. Sakalis did really well to get her body back in front. And it was just that late challenge across the body. And Perth yet again get to take a moment and settle into a little bit of ascendancy just 10 minutes in. But this one has opened in a flurry. Antoine. With both coaches not signed on for next year, there's so much uncertainty surrounding both teams, especially a Perth side where plenty of the players have come from either Sydney or Melbourne to join Alex Aparkas. A lot of this Brisbane Raw side, homegrown local talents. Here are the Raw. Here Paige Riley's cross, unable to find a teammate. Carroll. That was better from Brisbane. Just able to stretch the field. The switch was nice and really opened up a bit of space. Just that final pass from Riley. She will be frustrated with that. Just didn't do enough to draw the Queen too far out of her six-yard box. But it's really about her only second touch on the ball for the game. She's not had to do much so far, Morgan Aquino. Alex Parker's on the sideline there, giving some early instructions in this game. Just 11 minutes gone. Sakalis brought down, hanging onto the knee slightly, but looks like she'll be okay. Alani Janchevsky on the bench today. Scored a winner here at Perry Park when the sides played last year. And Hensley handcuff, unable to restart play. And keeper has been part of USA under 23 camps in recent months as well. Promising young shot stopper on loan from Gotham FC. Anton in for Lowry. Blake, this is good from Perth. Falletta against her former side, drifting it in. And Hensley Hank up equal to it. Izzy Falletta joined the Brisbane Raw partway through last season. And she returned from Italy. Playing in now, I believe her third Liberty A League club. Former Canberra United player as well. Yeah, Izzy Falletta, she was one of those players this year that struggled initially to pick up a, a contract, which, seeing her performances for, for Perth, have been, has been really surprising because she's done really, really well. Her first couple of games, she was either assisting goals or scoring them and did so much so that she's now a mainstay in Alex Aparkas' defensive line and really proved herself in that spot. Lowry, first time ball towards Blake. It's cut out by Jamila Rankin. She's been part of Matilda's setups in the past, still at a young age. Has been so steady for the Brisbane Roar over the past few seasons. Last season made a total of 55 interceptions in the league. The most of any player in the competition. Levin driving forward in her maiden campaign.
Carroll. For Leda. He's able to get past Zara Kruger. Lowry. Rigby. The one who typically wears the captain's armband and has been a mainstay in that right back position for Perth Glory for so long now. Faletta looping ball into the box. Jamila Rankin unable to rise above, but it does make its way through for Hensley Handcuff. Whether she'll be back next season is yet to be seen. Bella Shuttleworth, the reserve goalkeeper for today for the Brisbane Roar. We've seen her play in extended periods, especially last season. There's plenty of issues with the goalkeeping position after now Newcastle Jets goalkeeper Georgie Worth went down injured, was out for the season. Mia Bailey, who's the third choice keeper, played a few games, struggled to impress. And then Bella Shuttleworth came in. Had about four or five games towards the back end of last season. Had a save percentage of 78.3%, only behind Jada Wyman. And has found herself in the most recent Matilda squad that will face England and Scotland next week. One of four goalkeepers selected in Tony Gustafsson's side. Connors. Delivering towards Levin. Hasn't scored a Liberty A-League goal just yet. And it is clear that time by Sarah Kane, but still alive for the Brisbane Roar. Rankin, first time ball. And headed away by Kim Carroll, not taking any chances. Well, there's a couple of bright moments there for Brisbane. As they start to move into their attacking half and stretch the field, they look much more comfortable. Would have loved to have seen young Zara Kruger turn and look forward on the ball there. She played a nice one too, but had a bit of space to, to drive forward. But a set piece, a corner for Brisbane will be a great opportunity to have a look and send a ball into the dangerous part of the six-yard box. Tamar Levin is on set piece duty. In this corner at least. And a great campaign with the QAS as it's towards the near post and headed away. To get the chance to reset. Levin. Too deep on that occasion. And we'll go out for a goal kick. I think you mentioned at the top, Cam, that without Crummer and Gorry, the two Matildas having departed the side, seven goals for the season that the team no longer has. And let's have a look at the total shots for this opening 17, 18 minutes. Brisbane with just the one shot in Perth having five. So doing a lot more in their final attacking third at the moment, Perth. Really has been the tail of the season for the Brisbane Roar. Seven goals between Larissa Kramer and Katrina Gorey, as you mentioned. They've only scored 16 as a whole. The second lowest scoring side in the competition. It's been Shay Connors who's stepped up in the second half of Brisbane Raw's season and scored a handful of her own and she'll have a lot of work to do this afternoon. She's been a little quiet in this opening passage, but she does look very dangerous when she has space over behind any defensive line and I'm sure that's something that Perth Glory and Alex Apakis will be acutely aware of going into this one. And a great read on keepup.com.au with Shay Connors as well about her journey and how Lions FC here in Queensland. You can see a banner on the far side here at Perry Park as well that highlights all the clubs she's been at. Spent time in Iceland with Logan Lightning, Lions FC here in Queensland. Scored I believe, 50 goals in the one season for Lions FC. A complete and dominant side here in the local competition make sure you head to keepup.com.au for all your footballing news some brilliant articles videos all sorts of content Kruger
Russia. Riley. Norrie lifting it in behind. Four Connors. Now on the charge. Connors, first time strike. Over the top. And Welsh has scored some worldies here at Perry Park in the last few weeks. He's unable to do so on that occasion. But there are those moments from Shay Connors. She just gets half a look, a little bit of space. And given the kind of form she is in at the moment, just at the top of the 18-yard box, leaning back just slightly on that opportunity. But Perth won't want to give her too much time, too many looks at those ones. Just had to take a touch or two to settle herself. From playing in a bit more of a central role. After the wavering form and now departure of Larissa Crummer. One I know from talking to her that she does relish in. Likes playing in that more central role with more room to move, more direction. She can take the ball. McQueen has been part of that Lions FC dynasty here in Queensland as well has bred so many players across the Liberty A League only lost their first goal in around three years just a few short weeks ago Lowry Faletta Lawrence. Lowry once more. Sakalis. Lifting it towards the front post and Hensley handcuff. Not troubled. The idea there is right from Perth, but didn't quite have the numbers in the box to meet that delivery. Looking for an arrival run at the near post that wasn't there. In the end, handcuff can easily see that one into her hands but of course last time these two teams came together it was Perth who got the full three points thanks to a brace from Hannah Lowry and I'm sure she'll be so eager to have that kind of contribution here again today Faletta trying to chase it down on that occasion but the ball just took a little bit too far ahead of her will be a throw in for the Brisbane Raw. I'm sure there'll be plenty of carols in attendance today in the crowd. Kim Carroll from North Queensland, but plenty of family do reside here in the capital. Her sister playing locally in the past as well. Blake. Kane. Lawrence. He's had a good run in the team of late for Perth Glory. Rigby skips past Levin. And blocked that time by Sharp Fryer. Well, Rigby will not give up down this right hand side. It's attacking side for Perth. A relentless player, such a great leader. For the Glory Girls is Tash Rigby. So consistent for this Perth Glory side. Lowry towards the back post this time. Sakala's heading it back into the mixer. For the Glory. And he's cleared by Brisbane. And Kim Carroll with all of her experience in game 159. So able to direct traffic. Coleman. Trying to play it in. And no one's home for the Perth Glory. No options presenting in the middle. Both Sakalis and Hannah Lowry just on the edge of the box there. Gray Skill not making that run towards the near post. Yeah, there's been a few occasions now, Perth. It's a really good build up with the ball into nice areas, but the delivery into the box, it's just not enough Perth numbers looking to get on the end of some of those crosses coming in. Of course, we mentioned Sierra Hinson on the bench. Whether or not she looks to play some sort of role today, or if there's a precautionary tail around her, 
what was a heavily strapped knee from last week. Handcuff coming out to claim just inside her area. Could have been disastrous for Hensley Handcuff, but not the case in the end. There was a moment of indecision there about whether Handcuff was going to look to, to smother that one. You just see she staggers her run and whether or not she slightly got her feet caught in the grass or thought about that one twice. The right decision in the end from the American. Rankin does well to step out for the Brisbane Roar. Connors gets it back from Holly Palmer, but just can't reach her in the end. Anton. It's a little bit of a slow pace to the game at the moment, Grace Gill. Neither side really forcing the issue too much at the moment. Yeah, look, it took the words right out of my mouth there, Cam. It does have that really slow feel about it. It's about 24 degrees this afternoon here at Perry Park and a little bit muggy, so there's that heaviness about the game. But for Perth, this is their third fixture in seven days. Brisbane, on the other hand, have had a full seven days recovery. But there's just not that zip about this match. It's hard to, I guess, recreate that kind of momentum when both sides know that finals is no longer on the line. But... There's certainly a bit of pride, as you mentioned, to play for in this one. Especially from the Brisbane Roar's perspective. Their worst finish today, 7th in 2016-17. And a win today would temporarily, at least, put them above Western Sydney in 7th. So they've leaped from them in that case. Obviously, Western United taking on Western Sydney as we speak. So still opportunities for them, but they'd at least overtake Adelaide with a win or draw today. As for Perth, well, they can't drop down lower than sixth and they can't get higher than sixth, no matter what they do today. There is the opportunity if Canberra United lose heavily, potentially, on the weekend and Perth get a big win here. But they could finish in fifth, potentially. But purely relying on goal difference there. And depending on Canberra United, draw a loss, the big talking point from the weekend, of course. Will they make finals? And is still yet to be decided. Relying on results today and tomorrow. The strike from Sakalis just dragged towards the near post and wide. Really like that confidence there from Sakalis. She's a really tidy technical player. Good movement off the ball and she's done well to just create enough space for herself but doesn't, doesn't quite find the leverage behind that shot to really trouble Handcuff again. One of their six shots so far, Perth Glory. Just managing the one of them on target. Sophia Sakalis, such a good player. Such fun to watch as well. One that I'm sure Perth will be wanting to get out the pen and paper for over the next few weeks and months. Obviously, they need to figure out who will be leading the team come next season. Any question marks up in the air? I'm sure. Falletta. Lowry. It's one by Norrie. And Sakalis once more having a strike this time. Just over on that occasion, but lively from Sophia Sakalis. Uh, that one had a bit more whip about it, a bit more promise behind that shot. But yet again, Sakalis looking really energetic on the ball. She just scraps really well, and her first touch taking her away from traffic and a bit of danger. And if she's able just to dial that target, that range back on frame. She could really start to test handcuff. A player who plays with drive and purpose in her game. Here's Sophia Sakalis. Very talented. Just the one goal this year, however. In her second year. With the Perth Glory after previously being on the books at Melbourne City. And debuted for the side in 2017-18, making a total four senior appearances. 
So played for South Melbourne in the Victorian NPL Women's. Kruger is won by Lawrence. Lowry looking for Gabriella Coleman. Just can't find her, however. Kane does well to shield the ball. But it is won back by Brisbane. McQueen. Rankin. Fryer. Russia. And we've seen this from the Brisbane Roar over the last few weeks. There's three at the back. And Rosie tinkered around with formations and personnel over the course of the season, as you do when you're having a campaign such as theirs. Really utilising the most out of not only the, de the defenders they have, but also the wide defenders. Today, India Page Riley and Shard Fryer playing in those win wing back positions. Still allowing them to get forward as well. Jesse Rasha, such a strong player for them. A physical mismatch as well. The former Canberra United player scored against Adelaide United earlier this year. Became the Brisbane Rules. And I'm sure she won't mind me saying this. Oldest ever scorer. 35 years old. Lowry. Headed away by the player in question, Jesse Rasha. Goal against Adelaide, her first and only Liberty A-League goal today. The player only got her first professional contract at age 32. To play for Belconnen United. In the Capital League. Yeah, Jesse Rashad, an excellent player. When she was playing back in Canberra for Belconnen United and such a such an asset to that side and to Brisbane Raw now. Incredible speed, great aerial threat. She's got a brilliant long throw as well. The oldest player in this side, which is otherwise fairly young as well. Brings plenty of experience, not only on the pitch, but also just life experience to a young Brisbane Raw side. And one that I'm sure is valued not only by Gareth McPherson, but all the players as well. Having that older head to steer the younger ones. And it will be a goal kick. In fact, a corner for Brisbane. Jamila Rankin to take. And some great banners there for the Brisbane Roar as well. Ishinori Hensley handcuffed Jamila Rankin. All getting their own, and this time rising is Jesse Rashad. Takes a touch on the way through, though. And Morgan Aquino not troubled. Well, what statistics there against Brisbane Roar on corners? Not a single goal from a corner this season for Brisbane Roar. Struggling in the air, perhaps. Coleman. Kruger. Sandy Lawrence trying to lay it off, but just doesn't quite meet its mark. Kane. Just over 10 minutes to play in this first half. On either side. With too much of a golden chance, probably Gabriella Coleman's miss early in the game. The greatest of them so far as Shay Connors with a hopeful effort, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, just asking a few questions, Shay Connors, and not finding the answers. I know she's got great speed. Just looking up, she did have a couple of runners on either side of her, but difficult passes to find, and Brisbane are sitting deep. 
and allowing Turf to play in front of them. But on those moments, looking forward and not really having too many orange short shirts rather to provide support or an outlet pass. No, her family shake on us. Watch back from the US as well. I'm sure they'll be tuning in. Shane Connors grew up in Connecticut as well, went to St. John's University. And football's really taken her all over the globe. Shane Connors. Rash out to take the free kick here. Just get things back underway in the game. Kruger. Rankin. A switch of play. Folletta heading it down. Sakalis. Manages to evade two Brisbane Raw players, but just that final ball not hit exactly how she would have liked. Just one back by Perth. Blake. Coleman. Connor streaming away now. Runs into Kim Carroll. Goes down. No foul given. Kim Carroll not changing her line and standing tall. Well, Kim Carroll well and truly posted up there. And Shay Connors felt the full brunt of a stationary Kim Carroll was looking for the foul and asking a couple of questions of referee Anna Marie Keeley. But nothing in that one she's deemed. Kim Carroll gets the better of Connors once more on that occasion. Showing every bit of her experience. Pulling out all the tricks in her final game. Colbert. Trying to deliver but blocked by Jesse Rashard and go out for a throw in. We have another look back at it here. The collision. Kim Carroll potentially putting up a shoulder there for Shay Connors. No foul given, however. Maybe leaned into it a little bit. Just stepped across the line of Shay Connors. Unapologetically, I'd say, as well. Some old school defending from Kim Carroll. And it's won by Folletta. Folletta striking now over the target. Not drawing a sweat out of Hensley handcuff. Yeah, Perth continued to have those opportunities, moments just open up for them. And look, I'm wondering if they can start to look for perhaps a different passage toward goal at the moment. They're just a little hopeful from distance. You mentioned that early opportunity that Gabriella Coleman did have. And that was a really tidy build-up play. But since then, a lot of them have been long-range efforts. And as mentioned, just the one shot still on target for Perth, despite having the better of the chances. Fryer gets around Kane towards the near post now, and it's cut out by Liz Anton. Perth Glory, one of the more free-scoring sides in the competition this year. 30 goals for the campaign. Just about double what Brisbane Roar have managed. Plenty of shootouts last week, a perfect example of that. Melbourne City in that game, however, had an expected goals of 5.92. The most ever for a losing side in the Liberty A-League. I think Dario Vidicic for going grey very quickly with those kind of statistics. Oh, look, I think he would have been having a few conniptions over that one. Breaking out in night sweats and nightmares of that one at Macedonia Park. And Holly Palmer punched away by Aquino. And a brilliant save against her former side. Brisbane Roar's best chance of the game so far. And ends at a foul. And a restart for Perth Glory. But definitely... Brisbane's best chance of the match so far. 
Morgan Aquino, she had to be ready. She had to be alert for that. Holly Palmer, who has been excellent this, this year, this season. But Morgan Aquino has done really well there. Nice little dip of the shoulder from Palmer. Aquino has gone with the correct arm and it's a strong hand away. Blake lifting it over the top. Coleman just doesn't quite get her foot through it. And an American dies, denies another, I should say. Well, that'll be frustrating, not only for Coleman, but for Alexa Parkas as well. That's opened up. Defence has melted away there from Brisbane, and Coleman's just got the goalkeeper to beat. Looks as though she just slightly scuffed her shot and didn't get a nice, clean bit of boot behind it. But that's two pretty clear-cut chances there. For Gabriella Coleman, I'm sure she'll want again. Great ball over the top from Hannah Blake, just to dink it over the defence and make them redundant. Lowry. Perth has to maintain possession. Blake. Anton. Give it the long ball over the top. Fryer just reverses to head it down. It's like a game of rugby at the moment. Back and forth. Lawrence. Rigby. Rankin. Just able to settle things for the Raw. Maybe under a little bit of pressure here, but does well. Rankin. Connors dropping deep to set play up and just can't find Sean Fryer out wide. And the pace once again just slowing down before the halftime break. Perhaps some tired legs in what will be a humid day here in Brisbane. Lowry. Rigby. Blake. Anton. Just searching for options in front. Finds one out wide in Rigby. A good ball in from Rigby causing plenty of problems for Holly McQueen. And via Jamila Rankin it does find its way out of play. It was a patient ball through from Liz Anton and had to be two. Not too many options from Perth and an early hooked cross in from Tash Rigby. But again, that near post runner is just a little bit slow on the uptake there. And whether it's to get a touch or just to distract the defenders or the vision of handcuff. Lowry, low towards the front post and it is cleared. But kept alive by Lowry. Anton, back for Lowry, a great ball, a great run. Not followed up completely. And will be another corner. It was a good bit of play from Perth Glory. A strong run by Hannah Lowry. That was nice, good little one too between Anton and Lowry again. Larry thought about bringing that back onto her favoured left foot, but the resulting nicely whipped cross across the face of the goal was good from Hannah Larry. And after a little bit of confusion, it will be Hannah Larry once more for their sixth corner of the game from the same side. Larry towards Hensley Handcuff, who does sit underneath it. The tall shot stopper. Drafted 34th overall in the 2021 NWSL draft. Hensley Handcuff. Very talented player. That's for sure. Coleman. Good first touch. Not much ahead of her. Surrounded by four Brisbane Raw shirts and they do win out. And Blake doesn't manage to get past Sean Fryer. Kruger. Plenty of QAS talent in this Brisbane Raw side. Queensland Academy of Sport. 
Kruger and Levitt chief among them at the moment. Plenty of past talents as well. Those two just most recent graduates in the side. Holly McQueen spent time there as well. Sean Fryer. Plenty littered throughout the squad. That's for sure. And it'll be a free kick for the Brisbane Roar right before the half-time break. And a good area to deliver into the box. Jamila Rankin walking over to it, the left foot up. And could be, this be the opportunity for the Brisbane Roar to break the deadlock. No better time for them to do so. Two minutes added on here at Perry Park. Rank it. A nicely weighted ball, but it's just a little bit too deep. And no runner towards the back post for the Brisbane Roar. Yeah, it's not a bad set piece there from Rankin. But on that occasion, Brisbane just didn't quite have the run, as you mentioned there, Cam. A real swarm of orange shirts into the centre of the 18-yard box, but no bodies floating in around that far post where the ball ended up landing. Campbell Johnson and Grace Gill here in commentary. And ten play. Paramount Plus, and as well, you can catch all the simultaneous kickoffs on Dumb Zone, the final show of the season. As we head into finals after we'll have a week off next week, and Sophia Sakalis is down injured, just that ankle by the looks of things, that left side. And hopefully it's nothing too serious for her. Fortunately, in the final game of the season, plenty of time to recover if it is anything too serious there's been a player who has struggled with small injuries in the past yeah well in sign there for Sophia Sakalis and you hope it's nothing too serious she goes to her haunches and is back on her feet which is promising but obviously whatever caused the contact perhaps this challenge here with Riley was enough just to take her to ground as this first half ticks away. There'll be some time added on as well. For it looks like she'll be okay to continue. Reassessing the half-time sheds. For Sophia Sakalis. And the Brisbane Roar to give it back. And back underway for the final minute or so. Of this first half. Lowry. In fact, it is Carroll. One back by Connors. Still Connors. One by Carroll. A great battle unfolding. In Carroll's final game, Rasha. Norrie trying to lift it forward for Holly Palmer. Can't manage to do so. McQueen. And the sun's come out right before the half-time break. Fryer lifting it towards the middle, but in no particular direction or aim. This is good from Perth. Connors, can she pounce now? Driving towards Kim Carroll. Now the strike from Connors. Aquino equal to it. Anton. And that is halftime here at Perry Park in the final round of the regular season in the Liberty A-League. And it's neither side with a breakthrough at the halftime break. It is Brisbane Raw 1, or I should say nil, Perth Glory nil. Fairly slow first half, Grace Gill, but some positives for both sides potentially to take out of it. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think that first 45 minutes, Perth... Created on a couple of occasions and forced a couple of good saves out of Morgan Aquino, but 
I'd have to say that it was Perth who had the more straightforward chances and on a couple of moments it was Gabrielle Coleman who couldn't do a little bit more with these but Hannah Larry, she's continued to be productive in the first 45 minutes and I'm sure part of the conversation at halftime with Alex Aparkas would have been about how they can make the most of those chances and those entries into the final third. Both sides on the final weekend out of finals contention. Not a whole lot to play for other than really their audition for next season, Grace Gill. Both sides, both coaches yet to sign on for next campaign. Players, uncertainty surrounding them as well in terms of that with new coaches. And, you know, with this season, both sides obviously would have been hoping to make finals. Perth Glory made a late push. The Brisbane Roar on track at the moment for their worst ever finish as a club. I mean, there's plenty for both sides to do heading into next season. And as any competitive athlete as well, you want to go out on a high, you want to finish really strong. And every player, every team loves the feeling of winning, even if they're not in finals, they want to be able to finish off their season on a high. Well, the Raw have made Queensland a fortress for themselves this season. And they're losing one of their last 10 games in their home state. And they're currently drawn at the halftime break as we get underway for the second stanza here at Perry Park. Will that remain the same? Perth Glory, on the other hand, had the Raw's number in their last three meetings. It's perfectly balanced. Eight wins apiece, three draws as well across the history of this matchup. Will that change? Will either side get their nose in front? Will there be a bit of fairy tale magic for Kim Carroll's final game? Now we can speak it into existence, Grace Gill. <laughs> I'm sure for Kim Carroll, she deserves a goal of some sort on her send-off game. I'm sure she wouldn't want to see out her career with a nil-nil draw, but Perth certainly have had those moments and opportunities, and look, no doubt we'll see some changes in the next 15, 20 minutes or so, and benches particularly that of Perth. Perhaps a bit more attacking-minded than what... Brisbane Raw have on the pine. Well, just speaking about this off air, Grace, you mentioned to me, you said, well, there's Margot Rabin, Aaliyah Deverne, Talitha Kramer, Annie Hufferton and Bella Shuttleworth. Not an out-and-out -out attacker listed among them. Margot Rabin, a former Canberra United player, French international, can play there. Aaliyah Deverne, young midfielder. It's coming to that end of the season where it's either the walking wounded, players have gone overseas, in the case of Katrina Gorey and Larissa Crummer as well. It's then, you know, who, who can come into the side? Obviously, Kai Stevenson is out with injury at the moment as well. The young player is impressed. In her second stint with the Brisbane Roar. Limited options for Gareth McPherson. That's very true. Kaya Stevenson, a young player who, in her appearances, has looked really lively, really energetic. And I think Brisbane Raw today feeling feeling the fact they don't have Stevenson, they don't have Gorey, they don't have Crummer. And they're attacking outlet. They're looking a little bereft of ideas on a few occasions. Shay Connors has had her head up and found a bit of space, but she doesn't have much in the way of support around her. It's been a tough season for them, because when you look at it on paper at the start of the campaign, got Mario Hecker, Ishinori, Katrina Gori in your midfield. Mario Hecker is out with injury pretty much from day dot. Played one or two games at the start of the season. We'll get back to that in a moment as India Page Riley floats it into the box. And Shay Connors unable to force it back inside. But then you also have Katrina Gori taking personal leave at the start of the season for the first month. As we have another look back at the replay. It's a good ball by India Page Riley, a mid-season acquisition. I just couldn't direct it goal bound. And then Katrina Gori as well, heading back to Vichwa towards the back end of this season for the last few games. It's been a very tough season for the Brisbane Roar. Levin lifting it towards the back post. Jesse Rashard just over the target and almost had her second Liberty A-League goal. 
Well, that almost looked too good. It was a beautiful delivery, a delightful quarter. Jesse Rasha, uncontested, right on the six yard box, and she knows the slap of the thighs, the head back in frustration. That was Brisbane's chance to go ahead. And the marking on that from Perth Glory. Pretty much two Brisbane all players free towards the back post. Well worked by Brisbane, perhaps, or just lost the marker on that occasion. Either way, we'll have Alex Aparkas asking questions of his side. Riley. Mentioned mid-season acquisition. Just back at the Brisbane Raw, aside from Fortuna Hjoring, mid-season. Rankin. Mun by Hannah Blake. Gabriella Coleman going down in a tangle with Holly McQueen. A little bit of afters as well. And Gabriella Coleman having a few words for Holly McQueen. Is that a battle we'll see flesh out throughout the rest of the game? Just being caught there. And just a little kick out in frustration. Not entirely sure what was said between the two. But frustration's building, Grace Gill. Yeah, not, not good to see that between the two. I don't know if in the first challenge there was a huge amount of, of, of malice there from McQueen. It looked as though their legs had a bit of a tangle, but certainly Coleman had lashed out from the ground there. And yeah, you don't like to see that at all. Rankin able to head it away. Kane. Good ball out wide for Rigby. Good first touch. Blake. This place is a pass and Sean Fry. Able to come away with it for the Brisbane Roar. Zara Kruger growing into the game and the season in her first campaign of professional football. Shay Connor's unable to chase it down, but does well to stay the course. That's nice from Kruger. Buys herself some time and space. Great ball for Riley. India Page Riley winding up. Not enough venom, however. And that was much better in the midfield from youngster Zara Kruger. Good vision and a nice zippy ball across the middle of the park to open things up for Riley, who couldn't quite get the purchase behind that strike that she would have liked too. But Brisbane just feeling so to have a little bit more life about them at the moment. Here is Kruger, the teenager. In your page, Riley. Strong interception. Connors. Out wide for Palmer. Tees herself up. And Aquino underneath it. No real options in the middle for the Brisbane Roar that time. And Rigby comes away with it for Perth Glory. Coleman. Norrie. Does well. Still Norrie. Using her physicality well against her former side. The Brisbane Roar captain. Just eight appearances for the team in purple. Also spent some time with Melbourne Victory as well. Lawrence. Here's Lowry. Good run by Blake on the far side. Not met, however. Rigby. Having such a good campaign for the Perth Glory. Despite just having the one, the big only goal. Does love to bomb forward as well. And here, Paige Riley. Just the one goal since her return. Came in a homecoming match for the Brisbane Roar. Since then, has slowed down a little bit. It was quite the homecoming for Riley, the 21-year-old. Looked like a, a wonderful acquisition for Brisbane Roar and settled into the side really comfortably. Those first couple of appearances were probably some of her best and it's quieting down a little bit, but as you mentioned, Tam, the ins and outs of this 
squad as that tussle continues between Coleman and McQueen. But on this occasion, McQueen wins out. A bit of frustration from Gabriella Coleman. You wonder if she had finished one of those two chances earlier in the first half. That this frustration would be what we're seeing early in the stages of this second 45 minutes. Well, physical. She's got that pedigree as well. Her father, Marcus, enjoyed an 11-year NFL career. Saw him play for the New York Jets, Dallas Cowboys, and Houston Texans. A Hall of Famer. Her father. That NFL aggression. Fryer trying to slip it forward for Palmer. Can it just get through for the Brisbane Roar? Shane Connors scuffs her shot that time. Brisbane Raw starting to settle into this game a little bit, Grace. Yeah, that was nice from Brisbane. Tidy little touches I almost wanted on that occasion prior just to open up and take a shot herself. She had a good position on the top of the 18-yard box, but perhaps just tried to be a little bit too cute with that final pass in between a lot of Perth glory traffic. Carroll. Great ball for Sakalis. Sakala still threading it through for Coleman. Did she stay on side? The shot comes in and saved brilliantly by Hensley. Handcuff doesn't manage to hang on to it. But Coleman stayed on side, got the shot off, and was saved well by Hensley. Handcuff. Yeah, that's much nicer from Perth. Good strength thrown by Sakala and a well timed ball. Good weight behind the pass. Coleman. Gets a leg through it, and you can see the movement in the strike and how the ball wobbled around. It's a, tr a tricky one there. Lowry with the corner towards the near post. Manages to make its way through. And here is Valletta against her former side striking. And just bouncing through for Hensley Handcuff. And you wonder if that strike for Gabriella Coleman, if it went either side of Hensley Handcuff with it, we would have seen an opener. Just that deadly instinct lacking from Gabriella Coleman a little bit in this game so far. Norrie under pressure now. The Brisbane Raw captain. He's out of the press fairly well, but to one back by Perth. Over the top. Headed down by Rigby, does really well, Dutch Rigby, palmed away, almost followed through, but a brilliant clearance from Russia and denies Hannah Lowry. How did that happen? Well, hands on the head there from Hannah Lowry. Another kilted chance from Perth Glory, and again, it's Tash Rigby's persistence. The parry out from Hensley Handcuff. If not for Jesse Rusha there, positioned well to clear that one away. Hannah Lowry knows that one had to be steered into the back of the net. That is the exact reaction you expect. Lowry towards the near post now. Rankin strong header out of danger. Look at the pace from India Page Riley now. Speeding past Sakalis. Has Carolyn Kane to beat. May just wait for the cavalry to arrive and is brought down. And it's well done by India Page Riley. That's a great one there from Riley. You could see the separation she got between her and her defenders. She had three white shirts around her. But I wonder as well if Sarah Kane's lucky to get away without picking up a yellow card for that challenge there. Looked fairly tactical from mine on Sarah Kane. Lucky to not see yellow on that occasion. And Tamar Levin to deliver for the roar. In the mixer now, flicked on by Carroll. And we'll just go out for a corner. <laughs> Jamila Rankin to take for the Brisbane Raw. Promising young player. She's been around for a while now for the Brisbane Raw. So steady for them over the last few seasons. Rankin living towards the back post now punched away by Aquino still alive for Brisbane Rasha rising above Anton that time it will be a goal kick and Morgan Aquino almost in dangerous territory but does just enough to keep it out 
That was an awkward one there for Aquino and a good delivery from Rankin. The in swinging left foot it was a bit tricky to deal with. Zara Kruger and Holly Palmer giving away the foul on Hannah Lowry. Carroll. Lifting it over the top for Coleman. Can she control it? Does well. Gabriella Coleman. Blocked by Rashad. Does really well to deny the American. It took a touch last off a Perth shirt in the form of Sakalas, but they get it back. Kane. Anton. Letter Lawrence, nice ball looking for Hannah Blake in that reverse pass. Just can't find her in the end. It's cut out by the Brisbane Roar. Anson under pressure from Shay Connors, but deals with it well. Sakalis. We're looking for the run of Hannah Lowry. Playing in a more advanced position now. Norrie. Looking for Tamar Levin. Who started her first ever. The NBA League game here at Perry Park in round one this year. And some changes being made. Sophia Sakalis making way. Alana Janczewski coming on a player. It has been fantastic this year. Three goals, one assist for Janczewski, the Victorian. Looks like some Brisbane Raw shirts warming up as well. Whether they'll come on. And what time that'll be is yet to be seen. And Janczewski's had some massive moments for Perth this year. Can she do it now? Yeah, she sure has. I've been really impressed with Janczewski with her contributions this season. and. On a couple of occasions, I wondered if she was a little hard done by to not get more starting appearances, but whether it's as an impact player, her set piece ability. You mentioned some big moments, and she certainly had them, and look, I've got no doubt with 30 minutes to play, she'll be looking to make an impact this afternoon. Scored the winner here at Perry Park last year for Perth Glory against the Brisbane Roar, and Anna Blake just unable to find her. And the Brisbane Roar aimlessly clearing there and almost in trouble a little bit of a shove a little bit of tension slipping into the game now tomorrow 11 injured there after the challenge from tash rigby it's a little bit of feistiness slipping in grace yeah you get the sense there's just that frustration starting to fray you saw the the palm away to tash Rigby from Sean Fryer and a little bit of tension just starting to come through this game as it wears on. Neither side able to break the deadlock. It'll just be a cork there, a little bit of cramp settling in even for tomorrow 11. Looks like Margot Rabin, the former Canberra. United player, French midfielder there. Perhaps just copping a knee to Mar Levin. No malice in that from Tash Rigby. And it is to Mar Levin who ends her day. The youngster, Margot Rubin. Experience coming on for the Brisbane Roar. You mentioned the possibility of where she'll play on the field and if it'll be a like for like swap with that. Of Levin. Just heard perhaps a creative chant from the crowd as well. Levin on a prayer. Don't mind it. Don't mind it from the raw course. Oh, that's very good. Very good there from the raw call. Creativity points for sure. Well, at the moment, they've got one point in the game. Whether that continues is yet to be seen. At least they've got the creativity points in the last game of the season. For letter. For Janczewski. 
And in the Paige Riley does really well just to shepherd it out of play there. And handcuff to get things back underway. Brankin. Long ball forward and cut out by Perth. Coleman. Janczewski. Janczewski in for Coleman. A great ball. The American now across the face. Lowry unable to follow up once more. Once again, Anna Lowry just not clinical from that close range. Rigby does well, but just goes out of play. Oh, well, Perth are going to be ruining these missed chances. A really good bit of build-up play. Lovely from Coleman, and I thought for a moment Janczewski was going to unleash on that left foot as she has so often before, but the cutback from Coleman was excellent. I just couldn't quite meet the run of Hannah Lowry, but there's another chance gone begging for Perth Glory. Well, at the moment, they sit on 1.44 expected goals for the game. Both sides over one goal in the category but neither making a breakthrough as of yet carol beautifully weighted ball for lowry who sends it first time on the half volley Riley under pressure from Folletta and Folletta does give away the foul A bit of conjecture over the placement. But back underway. Connors. Norrie skips past one. Plays it over the top for Palmer. A good first touch off the knee. Now Connors from range. A spectacular strike off the woodwork and followed up by Margot Rabin, but over the bar. And geez, Shay Connor. Shay Connors, I should say. Well, she's in a purple patch. Well, Shay Connors, you just can't give her any amount of time or space. What was so impressive about getting that shot away, there's hardly any backlift off that left foot. He was able to get a strike that had Morgan Aquino beaten, but not the woodwork on this occasion. It would have been some strike. From Shay Connors. I just couldn't capitalise. Couldn't find that top corner. And Perth Glory, and their goal moves a charmed life for the moment. And maybe that'll breathe some life into this game and give Brisbane Raw some hope that they can get an open up and for Perth Glory. Perhaps a wake up call. Connors does manage to keep it in. This is great from Connors. Getting past Anton. Palmer arriving. And not enough assistance for the American. Blake. In for Coleman. Good turn of pace. From the American. Janczewski coming to assist. Lowry. Lowry now off the left. And lifted too high. Coleman is gradually looking better and better as this game wears on. It was an excellent run. She used good physicality strength to run across the body of Rankin and cut back to Lowry. It's well taken as well, but on that occasion, Lowry just unable to get that strike on target, leans back a little bit too much. But Perth in those moments it really does open up for them and they're creating well. Handcuff back underway now. Folletta. Anton. There's one back by the rule. Fryer now. Streaming away for Brisbane. Has Connors in the middle. Palmer at the back post. The ball in now, palmed away by Aquino. Palmer makes herself some room. That's brilliant from Palmer. 
And it is blocked by Perth Glory, but how about the footwork from Holly Palmer? Well, that's a blistering run there from Sean Fryer. Really well done to shake off the challenge from Tash Rigby, who had worked so hard to try and get herself back. Morgan Aquino overcommitted on the cross. Has the ball in now from Page. India Page Riley should say. Just get the sense the game is starting to open up a bit, whether it's through fatigue or errors. Both teams just giving away possession and it's really transitional. Palmer is looking for Connors and Kim Carroll. Come to do well to shield it back for and shot stopper. Okay. It's been a good double pivot today for the Perth Glory. Kept the pace of the game. And Sadie Lawrence and Sarah Kane for letter. A good battle here between herself and Palmer and a foul by Folletta just tugging onto the jersey and pulling down her former teammate. Seeing yellow for her efforts as well. Just for letter, she'd let herself down with that touch there. Allowed Palmer just to get back in front and look a little tug of the shirt. Tactical foul. It's comfortably going to be a yellow card and it will give Brisbane Roar a moment to load up into the 18 yard box as Jesse Rashart looks to swing this one in. Rashart. A long delivery. Just a little bit too skinny on that occasion. Not enough shape towards the back post and towards the bodies arriving. Not what she was hoping for. 70 minutes gone in this game, 20 to play. And a whole lot of pride as well. Connors just trying to lay it off for Margot Rabin. Could manage to do so. Coleman, great turn. Now almost beating Jamila Rankin, but still alive for Perth. And is blocked by Holly McQueen. And Rankin able to clear. And a change being made as well. Demi Kulazakis coming on, as well as Tian McKenna. And two coming off as well. Izzy Folletta and Sarah Kane finish their involvements in this season. And Tian McKenna, sister Letitia playing at Melbourne City, former Brisbane Raw player as well. A promising young player who's just called into the young Matildas squad for Leah Blaney's team there. And a great opportunity for her. Will be in the 2024 AFC Under 20 Women's Asian Cup qualifiers as it's headed on by a Gabriella Coleman. And she's had multiple opportunities today. And she punishes them now. Her third of the campaign. And what a timely manner. Well, you could see the way she celebrated that one. That those frustrations from those first half missed chances the delivery again from hannah lowry just delightful and coleman checks nicely to the near post a glance in header uncontested and a really well taken goal for perth glory it feels as though that one has been coming for some time well she scored on wednesday she scored again today and in her first start in four months it's delight for gabriella coleman and perth glory Take a late lead, 73 minutes gone. Still about 20 to play. That could be massive. Well, it had been a really frustrating first 45 minutes for Gabriella Coleman. This second half has been much improved and just as that corner has been taken in the background, I did see Sierra Hinson warming up as well. So I wonder if she will play a role for 15 minutes or so as this game ticks away. 
Anish Nori as well, just on screen moments ago there for Brisbane Raw. Perhaps by her standards, a little quieter today. Hasn't really commanded the midfield like she so often does. The ball in now. Can Brisbane get back into it? Still plenty of time for them to do so. Rankin. The ball in now. Headed by Rasha. Back post. The two former Canberra United players can't punish Perth Glory. Margot Rabin doesn't hit the target, but may have just been offside. And just as I spoke about Nori, she did really well to keep that ball alive and the entry in. But for Margot Rabin, almost a little bit too much time to try and get her head over the top of that ball. She's got to do better in that moment. McKenna. The ball long from Perth Glory. And they'll be looking just to slow things down in these final stages. This thing stand level on points and goal difference with Canberra United, but it won't be enough for them to make finals, of course. Carroll, back for Aquino. The two former Brisbane Raw players unable to exit in an efficient manner, and it will be a throw-in in your page, Riley. Connors. Can't make anything of that one. Riley driving forward now for the Brisbane Roar. Cuts back inside, strike is blocked by McKenna. And Aquino able to collect. That was a good driving run into the centre of the park there from Indy Page Riley. She did really well to send Kim Carroll one way and then drag it back onto her right foot, but didn't quite, rather didn't get enough space to get the shot away. And Tian McKenna had done well to close the, any space that was left down. Carroll. Demi Koulazakis playing in a midfield role today. Scored just the one NBA League goal during her time at Western Sydney Wanderers. In fact, Lowry does well to keep it alive. Sees the run on the far side by Hannah Blake. Switch of play for Perth. Janczewski, great first touch. Now Lowry on the edge of the box. And the Brisbane Raw deal with it adequately. Managed to clear their lines. There's a much better switch of play there from Perth Glory. And they find those combinations in the middle of the field. It was Janczewski to Lowry and Lowry over the top. And the run just offside from Hannah Blake, but a great bit of play from Hannah Lowry. Pulling the strings from the deeper position that time. But nothing comes of it for the Perth Glory. Rankin. Connors does well to keep it alive for herself. Riley, great touch inside. Has Palmer inside of her once more, and the strike from Riley blocked by Kim Carroll. We'll go out for a corner. Well, that first touch from Riley was delightful. Just waited for long enough, and inside her defender, Tian McKenna, couldn't quite get the space to get a clean shot away. But the first touch was lovely. And Tian McKenna playing in that fullback position, as typically played. That's a bit more of a holding mid, but playing that left fullback position today. Rankin towards the near post. Just headed over. But it will be another corner. Took a touch off a Perth Glory player on its way through. 
Lovely delivery from Rankin. Couple of hands in the air, questions asked about that one. Rankin once more towards the front post. It's Carbon Coffee and just gets past the front post and will be yet another corner. Perth Glory struggling to deal with it. And a delivery time and time again from Rankin. That in-swinger similar to that that we're seeing from Hannah Lowry at the other end of things. Rankin. Once again, that time headed away appropriately by Sadie Lawrence and Tian McKenna. Just sending it forward. Rankin over the top for Connors. Falls to her, takes a touch, almost creeps in. But Lowry off the line. She's here, she's here, she's everywhere. Hannah Lowry. But still the Brisbane Roar go. Both ends of the pitch for Hannah Lowry at the moment. Fryer. And it's blocked by Perth Glory. And another corner. I really, really enjoyed this first time touch over the defenders from Rankin to try and find Connors just to have the vision to know that there's a player in there. But how about this effort from Hannah Lowry off the line? Perth are just absorbing at the moment, absolutely scrambling to keep this one out of the net from Brisbane. Rabin towards the back post now. And Aquino gets enough on it just to clear her lines. And almost looked like it was creeping in towards the back post. There was a well taken corner there from Rabin. Had Morgan Aquino asking a few questions, just trying to get away through traffic there. And back on the left side, the in swinger from Rankin will come through, come through once more. 18 corners in the game. Can Brisbane score from this one? Makes its way over and will add another in what seems like about three minutes and 10 corners. Well, Brisbane are doing the most to bring themselves back into this one. Camped in on each corner flag. Rabin towards the back post, almost followed up this time by Riley and headed up by Kulazakis. And this time it's a throw in. Oh, that was sweetly struck there from Riley. Again, another well taken corner from Rabin. Aquino had to get a punch to it, and Riley's done well to get up and over, but Kulazakis. That's what you want your defenders there for. Might be seeing stars from that one as well, Kulazakis. And Perth Glory. Now they have a goal kick. Carroll driving out of defence for Perth Glory. Norrie. Palmer spots the run of Shay Connors but just can't find her. He's blocked by Carroll. Does come off Palmer. As McKenna take the throw in. Just under 10 minutes to play here at Perry Park. 10 minutes left of both side seasons. Anton blocked by Connors. Handball is the call and is the decision. Yep, nothing Shea Connors could have done about that one. Just at point blank range. It's kicked into her and it will give Perth just the opportunity to try and tick away at these minutes and they will really start to slow things down. But it feels as though the last 10, 15 minutes has just started to pick up a bit of energy in this game. Brisbane starting to build their way back in. It's Fryer. You can feel it coming a little bit, Grace. Will that be Grace Nostradamus Gill coming out here at Perry Park? If it is, I know who to come to for predictions moving forward. And the throw in now for Brisbane. Connors maintains the course. Out wide for Paige Riley. Now on the edge of the box, Palmer teams up India Paige Riley once more. And just can't manage 
to forge an opportunity for the Brisbane Raw. That's well won by Perth Glory. Anton. The switch now. Out for McKenna. Down the line for Janczewski. Lowry. McKenna. One by Norrie. Intercepting. Almost going past. Anna Lowry there. Will the foul be called up? And it is in the end. Holly Palmer able to draw it. Good industry again by Norrie and Palmer. Carroll just obstructing play there. Numbers flying forward for the Brisbane Raw. Palmer. It's a good ball just in behind. Is this the opportunity for the Raw? Riley. Driven in towards the penalty spot. Rankin. Able to keep it alive. Cops a late one, but taps from Alana Janczewski. Fryer. And chaotic from the Brisbane Raw. Frantic. 17 shots apiece. In this one, Coleman. Driving past Kruger and Holly McQueen wins out in what has been an intriguing battle today. Well time challenge there by McQueen. Had to be as well. Coleman was away. Had a lot of space in front of her. And we will see another substitution here. To lead the Kramer coming on for the Brisbane Raw. Perhaps Sean Fryer making way yet to be seen on that left hand side it is Holly Palmer did make way just going off on her near side to speed things up Sean Fry still out there for the Brisbane Raw Sean Fry just pushed a little further into more of an advanced role allowing Talitha Kramer to slot in behind her we did speak about Brisbane Raw's bench being perhaps a little bit more defensively minded but that does give Fryer an opportunity to move into more of an attacking space, and we know she does have great speed. Great day from Holly Palmer, though, creating plenty for Brisbane. And a bit of confusion there between Rankin and McQueen. And do we get away with it? I was going to say, Cam, you have to say a great season from Holly Palmer. What has been her last contribution today for the season for Brisbane Raw, but I think she's had an excellent campaign. There's a young player, still so much to offer, but she's been given a great opportunity this year at Brisbane. And look, I think she's taken that with two hands. In her second stint with the Brisbane Raw as well. And a better campaign this year than last. Just more minutes, more than anything. Rabin unable to make it past Liz Anton. Two Visa players colliding there. And a play down in Tash Rigby for Perth Glory. Hopefully nothing serious. One of the great characters in the game. Well, Rigby's come off second best in that challenge with Talitha Kramer. Just putting her body on the line as she so often does. But just collected... The incoming challenge there from Kramer and Kramer. Such a strong figure. I think she's done really well this year. Talitha Kramer coming across from the Wellington Phoenix. And getting some more game time here at Raw. I think she's had a strong season herself. Just a late stud there, perhaps. On Tash Rigby. And you can see there in the background, just to the right, all the clubs and universities that Shea Connors has played at. St John's. Reykjavik, Logan and Lyons as well. Apia on the end. Moved there for the most recent Liberty A-League off-season. As we have another look back. Cheers, both players diving in there and perhaps a late stud from Talitha Kramer. No malice, however. And that might be Tash Rigby's season. Done and dusted. 
Gets a round of applause from the away support, or the home support, I should say. Yeah, Natasha Rigby isn't the kind of player to go down easily. She's a real warrior out there. Now another corner for the Brisbane Raw, the dying embers of this match of the season for both sides. Margot Rabin, her first season in orange. Towards the near post, Aquino with enough on it to deny the Raw for now. Two Americans going side by side. And the foul given against Shay Connors, seeing yellow as well, just for the shirt tuck there. Didn't bring her down, but did obstruct, perhaps. Does he have another look here? Both players really with the hands in there. Shay Connors with the most cotton. Yeah, well, I think what started off as good physicality, perhaps Connors just holding on to the shirt for a little bit too long there. Sierra Hinton getting ready to come on for Gabriella Coleman. Sierra Hinton who's had such a good season was great when she came in partway through last campaign for the Perth Glory and has really backed it up this season. Six goals, seven assists. Can she add to that in her final few minutes of the campaign? And the final few minutes of Kim Carroll's career, which has been Fantastic. Kim Carroll. 159. Liberty A League appearances. The 35 year old from North Queensland. From Tully. As we head into stoppage time, five minutes will be added on. Kruger. Lovely touch there from the defender. Kruger and the youngster step up for the Brisbane Roar. Janczewski looking to find kind of blank there, just can't manage to do so. Gabriella Coleman still on despite what looked like the fourth official holding up her number to come off. Maybe just subbed on for Tash Rigby in that final moment. The numbers on the far side. Maybe a slight late change of plans. Perhaps. Either way, both the American forwards on for Perth Glory. on Kramer Rankin gets a last touch off Sierra Hinson now it has to be for the Brisbane Raw got to do it quickly if they're going to get anything out of this game in the final one of the campaign, a foul there. Provides a good opportunity for them. Suspected will be the left foot of Jamila Rankin to cross it in, although Ishinori is preparing. And Lowry perplexed by the decision. Always so emotive is Hannah Lowry. Nori, the captain. Just lifting it in towards the edge of the box. Falls down now. McKenna. Able to clear, Coleman. Kruger. Over the top. Flicked on by Rabin. Shay Connors can't find herself underneath it. Two more minutes of stoppage time to play. McKenna. The recent young Matildas call up. The strike this side from Hinson. Looked great. But Handcuff able to deny her compatriot. What a run that was from youngster Tian McKenna. 
only just to find the run of Sarah Hinson, who got the shot away really nicely, but just the industry behind this driving run and lovely little deft touch through to find Hinson. Couldn't quite get the lift over handcuff. Would be quite a task. Finds its way through for Rabine. Can she conjure some magic late here at Perry Park? And the cross hits the side, hurting from Margot Rabine. Just over a minute to play. Just over a minute of Kim Carroll's career as we have a look back at the replay, replay briefly. But what a career for Kim Carroll it has been, Grace. Incredible. She is such a, a legend of the game. So many young players who have come through under her guidance, under her leadership. As Hinson out wide for Blake, holding things up for Perth. Kulazakis. Janczewski. Perth soaking up the minutes now. Kulazakis just fending off. Shard Fryer on that far side. Goes the way of Brisbane. Alani Janczewski thinking otherwise. Just seconds left here. In Brisbane. Lovely bit of play from Perth. Ending their season on a high note. With an away trip, a long away trip as well and that is full time not only in this game between brisbane and perth but also in this liberty a league season and kim carroll's career in what has been illustrious and ending in the perfect way with a win against her former side as it ends here at perry park brisbane raw nil Perth Glory 1.